All right, FRQ number five of the 2023 AP Physics One free response. Um, the solutions aren't released. If I have any corrections, I promise I will put as a pinned comment as soon as I'm, you know, going through everyone pointing out any mistakes that I might make. But um, let's get into it. A rod with a sphere attached to the end is connected to a horizontal mat axle and carefully balanced so that it rests in position vertically up on the axle. The center mass of the rod sphere system is indicated with an X. The sphere is lightly tapped and the rod sphere system rotates clockwise with negligible friction about the axle due to gravitational force. A student takes a video of the rod rotating from the vertically upward position to the vertically downward position. Figure, five, figure two shows five frames as a student selected for the video. No, these frames are not equally spaced apart in time. So they're just talking about like, boop, it went clockwise down towards the bottom. Okay, fair enough. Use the frames of the video shown in figure two to answer the questions. Which frame is the angular acceleration of the rod system the greatest? So angular acceleration, I want to know when it is the greatest. When it is the greatest has to do with, if I'm asking about angular acceleration, you should be thinking either kinematics, which I don't have enough, or you should be thinking net torque equals I alpha, right? That's a dynamics question. So that's a free body diagram question. So you should be looking at the free body diagram and the axial force is always going to be somewhat forced there. You're going to have gravity on this thing, and you're going to have gravity on this thing. But hopefully, the only thing that matters is the torque. And so if you look at these, all of them have the same force, all the same mg. Which one is going to exert the greatest torque? How do we calculate torque? We identify the axis of rotation. We draw an r vector from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied and we decide which one exerts the most torque. And the most the force is the same, but I care about the force of gravity that's perpendicular, right? So which one is gonna have the biggest torque is frame C, because that's where the, the gravitational force is perpendicular to R already, thus you're gonna have the greatest torque. For all of these other ones, you are going to have to decompose the R into the component that is perpendicular to mg, right? That's how we calculate torque. Right, this these two are going to have a torque of zero. This one's going to have a torque, but ultimately that's going to be smaller than frame C, where you are going to have the greatest torque. So frame C, because it has the greatest torque, has the the, the because the the gravity, the mg, acting on the sphere, exerts the greatest torque. because it is perpendicular to the, I don't know what you call that. Some people call it line of action. I don't know, there's various words, but perpendicular to the, um, the um, R vector from axis to um, the force, to, grab the F to mg. Okay, so it's already perpendicular. It's going to be the greatest torque. You probably just need to say greatest torque. Just make some argument about the greatest torque. In which frame is the rotational kinetic energy of the rod sphere system the greatest? Briefly justify your answer. Um, well, that's when it's spinning the fastest. So you, from an energy point, so if we're doing energy point of view, you want to think about like, remember during this motion, conservation of energy, if you include the earth in the system, Right, so there's no external work happening on this system, so conservation of energy. So at the lowest point, when it has the least potential energy, it would have the greatest kinetic energy. Greatest kinetic energy is gonna, uh, the lowest potential energy is gonna be in frame E because it's at the lowest point. So frame E, and because that's because it has the lowest gravitational potential energy, which means it has the highest kinetic energy and um, what am I going to say about that one? And um, energy is conserved. Or I would, I would just move energy is conserved during the motion. Okay. Okay, the rod sphere system has a mass M and length L. Okay. And the center mass is located three quarters of L from the axle shown. Derive an expression for the change in kinetic energy of the rod sphere earth system. So this is really important when they define the system. That means we're including gravitational potential energy and any kinetic energy we got from the moment of frame A to the moment shown in frame E. Express your answer in terms of M, L, and fundamental constants as appropriate. Okay, so let's see. The rod sphere system has a mass M and length L. Now, this, the, the rod, uh, okay, so it's just the rod. The, I think the rod, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so. All right, so we have a rod sphere system here. 
we have this rod. We don't know how the mass is split up, but I guess that's okay. Um, what I would do is the change in, oh, the change in kinetic energy. So at the, so if you think about it at the very top, let's kind of like look at the scenarios here. I'll do it on, up on here because it's probably a little, bit, a little bit easier to see from frame A to frame E. So down here, actually where the axis of rotation is, is probably where I want to put the lowest part here. Okay, so that is, that is uh, h equals zero for my gravitational potential. So when we do work in energy, we say what kind of energy we have here. Well, we have no kinetic energy because it's not moving yet, but we do have gravitational potential energy. Now, what's the distance from there to there? That is L, and then this is three fourths L. So from our reference height here, oh, actually, sorry, this is three quarters L. So from our reference height, where three quarters L and another three quarters L, it's mgh, which is mg times three fourths plus three fourths or three halves L. Okay, then down here at this reference height of zero, we don't have any gravitational potential ener energy anymore. We only have kinetic energy. And so here is just the kinetic energy, which is what we're and the Oh, the kinetic energy up here is, is zero, right? So uh, the, the energy down here is just equal to the kinetic energy. So the change in kinetic energy, so you're just going to set these equal to each other. Kinetic energy is going to equal to this thing. So the kinetic energy at the bottom is going to equal this this quantity we got here, which is three halves mgl. Okay, and that is the change because the initial kinetic energy is zero, so the change in kinetic energy is going to be equal to three halves mgl minus zero, or just three halves mgl. Briefly explain why the rod and sphere gain kinetic energy, even the Earth is not included in the system. Okay, so if you don't include the rod and the sphere in the system, then we're saying that the the gravity, the, the you know, the gravity is not part of the system. The Earth's not part of the system. Gravity is not an in, internal force. Gravity will do work on the system. So if it, the Earth's not included in the system, then the work is no longer zero. The work is, is due to uh, work done by gravity, due to gravity, because gravity does work on the system. So the work done by gravity gravity increases the kinetic energy. Okay, so gravity does work because if you don't include the earth in the system, mg is now an external force and there is work. When you included the earth in the system, mg was an internal force. So there was no work. That's why we do conservation of energy because the work is zero at that point. Okay, there's that one.